We're back with Five Guys and a Bible, and tonight we are answering a question once again. I believe it was it sent in by one of you guys. Jason, was it sent in by someone? I'm not sure. He was sent in by someone. Okay, all right, good. That's what we like. We don't come with up with too many on ourselves. We all do a pretty good job of keeping us uh, in line here with things to answer. So the question is, is does turning the other cheek literally mean not to defend ourselves from an attacker? So we are going to start with Todd Bryant. Maybe. Oh, you want more? I'm sorry. Um, you know, if, if your life is being threatened, your health is being threatened, I mean, somebody is, is you know, you're in line at the grocery store and, and, a, and a robber comes in, you know, I, I mean, I don't think the Lord expects you to just stand there and say, hey, shoot me first, you know, or whatever. I, I don't I don't think that's the that's the, the teaching that's going on here. Um, I, I think the point is, if, if, if you've got an enemy and and. You know, maybe they just do something wrong to you. Don't return evil for evil. You know, do your best to to return good for evil. You know, Romans tells us in chapter 12, as, as much as lies within you, if it's possible, live peacefully with all men. You know, if, if it's possible. Sometimes you can take a little bad off people and return some good with it, and, and it does a lot. I, I mean, so I think that's the point. I don't think the point that he's making is if somebody is literally trying to kill you, stand there and take it so that your family is now without a father or a mother or, a, you know, whatever. I, I don't think that's the point. If somebody's breaking in your house that you can't defend yourself, I, I, I don't think that's at all the point. But the, I think what Jesus is saying here. Is it if if a friend or an enemy is is doing something to you that's wrong, maybe they're maybe they're gossiping on you. Don't return it and gossip back on them. You know, uh, and and it may be something that they slap you, but you know, you, if if you're really not in real harm, it's just it's just a slap. Don't turn around and slap it again. I think that's the point that he's making. I, uh, when you when your life is in danger, you're physically. Uh, about to be harmed, maybe your your children are about to be harmed. I think you have the right to defend yourself. But, um, this is this is talking about something a little bit different than that. I let the other guys straighten me out, but that's about all I have. Then we're going to move right over to the left to Troy McGahan. All right. Well, um, I look it over here in Luke chapter six and verse. And verses 27 down through 29. And one of the things I always like to do is get the context of what's going on here. Now, if all you read is, And unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. And him that taketh away the cloak, forbid not to take that coat also. If you just read the first part of that verse, it would seem to, to teach that, yeah, you know, if someone hits you, well, you know, just sit there and take it. Well, that that's not what it's teaching. Go back to verse 27. This is in Luke chapter 6, verse 27. But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies. Do good to them which hate you. Bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. Now, the word despitefully means falsely accused, slander, something like that. Then he says, and unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek. So someone that's your enemy, they're abusing you, they're, uh, they hate your guts, they're mistreating you, they're slandering your name, okay? And they're talking bad about you. You know, what do you do? Just sit there and say, well, they're doing bad to me, so I'm going to go out here and I'm going to run them down too. No. What Jesus says here is love your enemies. Love them which do uh, that which is harmful to you, which hate you. Then he says, bless them. Well, what does that mean to bless? Bless gives the idea to speak well of them. Like Brother Todd said, you have opportunity 
to, uh, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. Don't get caught up in a knockdown, drag out war of words or a slander contest. Don't do that. Then he goes on to say, bless them that curse you. Pray for them which despitefully use you. It is hard to stay mad at somebody. It is hard to hold someone in your heart as an enemy if you're praying for them. I've had to do that before, and I tell you what, it may not have done much for them, but it did a whole bunch for me. It changed my attitude about them. Then notice, and unto him that smiteth thee on one cheek, literally comes up and smacks you as hard as they can. Offer also the other. In other words, they hit you here. Turn around and say, okay, do that too. In other words, again, like Brother Todd said, if it's not some kind of life-threatening situation, don't knock the block off. Show the grace of God with a kind, gentle response. And then he says, and him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Hey, they take this, take your... Take one article of clothing, hey, give them the other. That's what it's talking about. Don't retaliate. Show the love of Christ by going the extra mile. That's what I've got. All right, keep moving to the left. Jason Schultz, you're next. Um, I'm going to have to answer yes. That's exactly what Jesus means. Now, I'm going to ask you to do something. Please hit pause on the video. Go get your Bible if you don't have your Bible. Look at Matthew chapter 5. It's important to look at the passage as a whole, like Troy said, in the context, to see what Jesus is saying. This is the Sermon on the Mount. Okay, It starts at the beginning of Matthew chapter 5. Virtually everything Jesus says in the sermon is extreme, right? He starts with the extreme views and the Beatitudes, uh, the beginning of Matthew 5, that it's the meek and the mournful and the pure-hearted who will be blessed, even though he also promises they'll be persecuted. You know, he's extreme as he goes through Matthew 5 and defines anger as murder. He defines lust as adultery. Right? And that's all leading up to this passage. So when we find that he says something that seems extreme, it actually fits the context pretty well, and it should be considered just as literal as the rest of it. Um, specifically, the, the turn the other cheek passage is just one of four examples Jesus uses for a specific principle he's teaching. The principle is found in verses 38 and the beginning of verse 39 in Matthew 5. He said, you've heard it been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I say unto you that you resist not the evil. The Old Testament law actually does state that principle of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but it had been taken out of context. Um, that law was there to assure there was not any excessive retaliation for wrongdoing. If a person broke the law, Right? If somebody punches you in the nose, you don't get to murder them back. Right? It's, it's there to limit uh, justice to what the actual offense was. So an eye for an eye. It's there to say that's the maximum retaliation. But that law had over the years come to mean to people that any wrongdoing had to be met with at least as much punishment. So they thought an eye for an eye was the minimum retaliation. So as Jesus is teaching his disciples how to deal with people on a personal level, he shows that principle of justice can be satisfied through forgiveness or through willingly accepting wrongdoing without retaliating at all. And he actually uses four examples. You can see in verse 38, if someone hits you, turn the other cheek. In verse 40, if someone sues you, give them more than they're asking for. In verse 41, if somebody forces you to carry a burden one mile, you take it two miles. You go further than they're, they're making you do. And in verse 42, if someone asks to borrow something, you give it to them, really no matter whether you expect that you're going to get it back or not. So why on earth would a Christian do that? Why would we withhold justice? Why would we not retaliate? Why would we suffer wrongdoing? Because in doing that, 
We're following the example of God himself who is merciful and long-suffering, and that's how Jesus wraps it up. It's starting in verse 43. It says, you've heard it been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them that despitefully use and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he makes his son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Right? So when you take it all in context, yeah, we hear that turn the other cheek, and we think, man, that is so extreme. That fits perfectly with the Sermon on the Mount. He means exactly what he says, literally, turn the other cheek. I'm done. That moves things down to me. Um, I, when I look at this scripture, if uh, you know, you, you could have, if I would have written down notes, they would have sounded a lot like Todd's. I, I believe that that is the spirit of uh, what is uh, going on here in the text. That it's it's speaking. It's not a lot of people take this verse and they say, well, here's a a verse that means that Christians should not serve in the military. That Christians should be complete pacifist and, uh, you know, never defend themselves. You know, if, if this were true, then Christians would be the poorest and most abused people in the world because everyone would be taking advantage of us all the time and keeping us as, as down downtrodden as possible. And I, I don't think that that's necessarily the text here. But it is, again, speaking uh, primarily uh, about how we – how we respond. Are we responding in, in a right manner? Yes, yes, sometimes we do take the beating, uh, but the idea is not to go back and to over-retaliate. Really, that's a lot of what Jason just said as well. Uh, so, I, I really, this is the same thing everybody else has said so far, pretty much. Uh, so, we'll see what Mark has to say. Well, <clears throat> We all going to have the same answers on these questions because you know the, the the example is it's. Let me just tell you what I'm thinking. Let's go to First Peter two twenty three. You want an example? We're supposed to be followers of Christ Jesus. First Peter two twenty three gives us that. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live under righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. So we have the perfect example here of how Christ handled that situation. He was reviled, and he reviled not again. Okay? And so again, it's it's turning the other cheek is uh, doing good to your neighbor. It is praying for those who despitefully use you. And remember this, I, I, I love this part of it. Most of the time when we are seeking uh, retaliation, we are actually looking for self-justification, like I'm right, you're wrong, and I'm going to prove to you that I'm right. Well, in what it, the example Christ gave us was he committed himself to him that judges righteously. He didn't worry about self-justification. He didn't worry about proving that he was right. He just allowed God, the one who judges righteously, to, to judge in the situation. And so, um, you know, if we're retaliating or seeking revenge, we're seeking self, uh, self-justification. self And don't let that be the reason. Uh, like we said, uh, defend yourself if necessary. But, you know, the principle, as Jason said, is turn the other cheek. Pray for those that's about to use you. And I don't want to re- repeat what everyone else said. But I just thought it was good for me to go and, and look at Christ there and, and use his example. And maybe you can get a little more... Um, a little more background by saying I'm going to do what Jesus did. And so with that, I'll be finished. I guess the, if I was going to add one more thing, I'd say, uh, you know, as far as Christians go, we shouldn't be the kind of people who are out there looking for a fight either, looking for something to rebel against, that kind of nature. Um, so I might add that Ooh. point. But uh, anybody else? In our society. Yeah. Um, anybody got anything they want to add before we say goodnight? Troy. One, one quick thing. Um, you brought up a good point there. As God's people, 
I think it goes back again to the principle, as much as life within you, live peaceably with all men. One of the things about being a, uh, one of the qualifications of a pastor, a lot of people uh, seem to camp out on the first few verses. But what about there where it talks about not being a brawler? Uh, you know, I think that has more to do with than just, you know, getting into fisticuffs. I believe that's talking about an attitude. And we as pastors, I'll, I'll say beyond just, that's not the right way to put it, but not just Christians in general, but in particular as pastors, we ought to have a good spirit. I shouldn't be looking to always look for a fight with Brother Todd or with Brother so-and-so out here. There ought to be a meekness about us. And usually when a person is always ready to just take someone down, it's because of an issue of pride. And I really believe that if we'll get rid of the pride in our heart and lives and really die to ourselves daily, we can live the example of what Christ is telling us to do there in the Gospels. So that's what I have. Anybody else now that we've got another whole other discussion going to as well? Probably. Another question. Lots of questions can be sprung from this one, I can tell you that. So uh, we're going to end there. So we appreciate the question, though, and uh, thank you for watching and hope that you will uh, ask questions, comment, share us, and uh if you haven't liked us, make sure you like us. Hopefully you like us. You've stayed with us this long. You ought to like us um, or really hate us, one of the two. And we, we have those two. So, you know, that's okay. <laughs> that's right. But we're not going to retaliate. No worries. <laughs> so uh, thank you again for watching. Good night and God bless. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.